if you don't know who I am, then maybe your best course would be to tread lightly.
That was De Tetra with the song Adversary of the Rotten Christ, and you're listening to the, oh my gosh, fourth Dreams of Consciousness mixtape. I'm Adrian Saul, and I'm flying solo this time. This is the Thai metal podcast, Metal Bands from Thailand, which was supposed to come out way back in December of last year. And I don't really know what to say about that, except my apologies to all the bands who sent me their music or gave me their approval a year ago, and were wondering what the hell happened with this. But it's out now, only eight months later. So congrats to me. Before I start talking about the actual music, I should explain the genesis of this podcast. I booked a weekend trip to Bangkok in October of last year for a competition, which I ended up pull in, pulling out of because of an injury. But the hotel room was already booked, and the flight was non-refundable, so I said fuck it, and went anyways. So around the time the first Dreams of Consciousness mixtape went up on SoundCloud, I was in Bangkok with not much to do. And I reached out to some people in the KL scene, and asked if there were any cool record stores I could check out while I was in town. And the Atomic Death guys put me in touch with the owner of the Heaven and Hell store in Jatujak Market. The mysterious man I know only as M. So I headed to Heaven and Hell, where M was waiting for me, with a huge stack of local metal CDs, and we had ourselves a little listening party. Since I only had a limited amount of time to choose things, I made a lot of snap judgments. If a band didn't click with me in the first 20 seconds, they were put in the no pile. A little bit of Malcolm Gladwell's blink going on there. But I came away with a lot of good stuff, thanks to M's knowledge of the scene. This mysterious man I know only as M. De Tetra, who you just heard, is the band that stood out most to me at the time, that I think will probably get the most attention overseas. They're a female-fronted black metal band, which is pretty unusual. Um, except in Southeast Asia, we actually have quite a few female-fronted metal bands. I'm not really sure why, but I would like to do a whole podcast revolving around that. Uh, Day Tetra remind me a lot of Swedish black metal bands like Dark Funeral and Nagelfar, which is a good thing, because Nagelfar are one of the best black metal bands ever, and quite possibly my favorite black metal band. The Day Tetra single that I got, um, that you heard a song from, came with a patch, which is pretty cool if you are into patches, I guess. Coming up next, you are going to hear possibly my favorite uh, metal band from Thailand. This was another one of the CDs that M pulled out for me, which was um, this really intriguing kind of avant-garde Gorgut slash immolation thing. And I was looking at the cover, trying to figure out what the logo said. It was kind of this spiky, bloody death metal band logo, a little bit like the Bloodbath logo. And after I finally made it out, I said to myself, dude, you did not just call your death metal band Macaroni. Which is what they're called. They are called Macaroni. In fairness, the way Thai people say that word is a lot cooler. M was pronouncing it a little bit like Macaron. Uh, but I'm used to bands in Southeast Asia having really silly names. A lot of dudes name their bands something they think sounds evil, but in translation just ends up sounding ridiculous. Though, from what I've read, Macaroni chose their name because they thought it would be funny. So, credit to those guys for having a sense of humor. The name, or at least the, the weirdness of the name, does somewhat go along with their music, which is fairly off the wall and a little bit unusual. Like I said, they're doing a little bit of that Immolation Gorguts uh, avant-garde uh, death metal thing. Frankly, there aren't a lot of bands in Asia doing anything remotely as interesting, except Brimstone and Fire, uh, my friends in the Philippines. And like Brimstone, Macaroni have been around for a long time. Uh, according to Encyclopedia Metallum, they formed around 92, and the first album, Cremation, came out around 96. Sometimes you'll see that, um, you'll see Cremation erroneously referred to as a demo, but it actually was their first album. It just happened to come out on cassette. So Macaroni are OGs for sure. You can hear a lot of that early 90s death metal sound on the Cremation album. 
stuff like Cannibal Corpse, Old Sepultura, you know, the Scott Burns era. Macaroni, to me, is a pretty big deal, to the point where I listed their last album, uh, A Gift for Corpse, on my year-end list, my top albums of 2012. Good luck finding it outside of Thailand, though. Uh, I couldn't even find songs on YouTube. Hopefully these dudes will get a Bandcamp page or a SoundCloud page together or something, because they really do, do deserve to be heard, especially in a year that Immolation, Gorguts, and Ulcerate all put out albums. Macaroni would fit right in with that. So you're about to hear Bloody Power from uh, Macaroni's Gift of Corpse album, followed by a song from their debut, Cremation. And I'm not going to say the song title because it's in Thai, and I'll probably fuck it up. Actually, fuck it. Let's have some fun. I think the song is called Liu Fun Roy. Is... <laughs> is that even close? Probably not. Anyways, here's Macaroni. Enjoy.
everything on your end. Uh-huh. That's some language you got there. And you talk like that 24-7, huh? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
last song was Baptism by the band Anubis from the Metal Farm Volume 4 compilation. Before that, you heard a couple songs from the band Macaroni. I like my death metal fast. I like my death metal brutal, and I like my death metal a little technical. So when M played me the Metal Farm Volume 4 compilation, Anubis really jumped out to me. I asked M, the mysterious man I know only as M, if he had any of their other albums, and he told me that he's been looking for more information about this band for years, and hasn't been able to find any. And when I got back home, tried to find more about them, and haven't been able to find anything about them either. They aren't even on Encyclopedia Metallum, and let's face it, that site has everything. I basically included Anubis on this podcast because I'm hoping that someone can get in touch with me and tell me a little bit more about them. And if those dudes are uh, in a band now or have done anything consequently. I should point out to people living in the US or in Europe that finding metal bands in their own country here in Southeast Asia can be tricky. I learned that the hard way when I was visiting Singapore over summer break in the year 2000. Impiety had just released uh, the Skull Fucking Armageddon album, and I figured since I was in Singapore, I could just walk into a store and pick up a CD. Wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. In Southeast Asia, the big music stores don't stock any of the local bands unless that band is signed to a major label. The mainstream retail outlets don't even want to touch this kind of music, and have no real incentive to do so. Let's face it, most local bands here don't press more than a couple hundred CDs for a reason. This scene is small, and therefore the market is small. That's why little specialty shops like M's Heaven and Hell, and the Triple Six record store in Bangkok, or the old rice cooker shop that Joe Kidd used to have in KL are so important. The next block of bands are bands that I came across after my Bangkok trip. The first one, Heretic Angels, are a death thrash band. They remind, they remind me a little bit of Vader and Sinister, except with the occasional keyboard part. After that, you're going to hear Zygotsis, who actually have a few ex-members from Heretic Angels. They play black and death metal along the lines of Impiety, which is a very popular style in Southeast Asia. Impiety cast a fairly large shadow across the region. Zygotsis actually played here in Kale a few months back, opening for Destruction, but I was in New York uh, at the time for a wedding, so hopefully these guys will be back soon. I would like to see them. And the last band you'll hear on the upcoming block is Voiceless of Fear, who actually got in touch with me instead of the other way around. I sent out word for bands in the region to contact me, and one of the few that did were these guys. Which is weird. I have dudes from Greece and Canada sending me music, but very few from Southeast Asia. So if you ever wonder why I have so many Canadian bands on the blog, that's why. Voiceless of Fear are a little death quarry, which will make some people roll their eyes, but I think they're quite good, which is why they're on here. I'm not really interested in sitting at the cool kids table and just covering Cavalt necro black metal bands or whatever's hip with the message board chuds at the moment. If I like a band, I'll cover it. And like I said, these guys were one of the few bands that actually reached out to me and sent me music. So I'll say again, if you are in a band in Southeast Asia, especially if you're death, grind, or black metal, please send me your music. If I like it, I'll write about it or put it on a podcast. So here you go. Heretic Angels, Zygosis, and Voiceless of Fear. Enjoy. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. 
could have done a little bit of research into the Thai scene before I got to Bangkok, and I probably should have. But when it comes to these these local scenes, these regional Southeast Asian scenes, I actually prefer to come in completely blank and hopefully find someone else to guide or inform me. The reason for that is I think only having a little bit of knowledge can be a dangerous thing. I'm wary of anyone who's new to something, has very little experience or information, but makes plenty of assumptions. I'm lucky to have found guys, guys like M, you know, the mysterious man I know only as M, or the Tools of the Trade guys, or my friend Ian from Brimstone and Fire, who was my co-host on the last podcast. Let's finish up the podcast with the first Thai band that I ever saw, which is Remains. I saw Remains almost a year ago, almost exactly a year ago, at the 2012 Kuala Lumpur Thrash Fest. They were actually one of two Thai thrash bands that played that day, but the other band never responded when I asked if I could use their music on this podcast, so I just went with Remains. Which is okay, because Remains was a better band anyways. They do that retro thrash thing, which... If you read the blog, you know I'm not particularly a fan of the whole thrash revival scene. But I do like Remains, and I was impressed by their stage presence and by how tight they were. I like them, even though all their releases so far have been on cassette, which is the other thing that I'm constantly complaining about on the blog. And on that note... I may actually be back in Bangkok in a few months, so hopefully there'll be a part two to this. Taking us out, here's Remains with Siamese Thrashing Terror. I'm Adrian Saul, and I thank you for listening.
Thailand, T, I, and so on. <laughs>